Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to be doing planned pooling. Um, this is using Antique. Um, I know that there are lots of planned pooling videos out there. Um, some people are still having a hard time grasping it and getting it. Um, so this video is to try to help with that. Um, it addresses the turns. I have um, come to realize that a lot of people have issues with the turns. Um, today we're using Antique. Um, I've also done other videos with some of the other colors. Um, I've done Bright Mix and also Earth and Sky. Today I'm doing Antique because sometimes some people just need to see it in the color that they're using. Um, some people are very visual and they just kind of need to see it worked. So hopefully this helps you out. All right, so this is Antique and we're gonna go by the label here. It says to use an eye hook, a 5.5 millimeter, size nine. So I've got, I've got my eye hook here, my 5.5. I also have grabbed um, my other two, a couple of other hooks. I've got my G hook and I have my H hook, just in case that they're needed. All right, so I'm gonna set this down here. Yeah, I'm using my phone. Okay. So I've messed with this already for a little bit um, and I've tried to do a couple of videos already and they didn't turn out right. Um, I had a problem with uploading and then my other one was interrupted. Um, but in doing so, there's a couple of issues with this yarn. Um, you've got your teal and then you have this transition color that goes into the burgundy. So this transition purple goes into the burgundy and then it goes into cream colored. And then the cream goes into brown and then it goes back into the teal again. And there's a long transition going into the teal. So here's the teal and here's this green, this darker green color that comes out of the brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna choose to start with the cream colored. Um, typically you go through and you just crochet, you find your repeat in it, you just crochet along. But for this purpose, I am going to begin the moss stitch row with, with the cream colored because it's gonna have a more definite transition. All right, so I'm just gonna crochet here. I'm going to single crochet all the way through until I come up to the next cream colored. And I do go pretty fast. Sorry if my angle of my camera isn't the greatest. I've got a big old wad of yarn here because I did all this earlier, a few times earlier actually. And I'm kind of wadded up here. All right, so I'm just gonna crochet this chain. I'm gonna chain all the way through. All right. My name is pronounced Donna McElvaney. Um, it's not very common, so you may have heard it. You may have not heard it. If you have any trouble with the videos or with planned pulling, um, I'd invite you to find me on Facebook and you can message me, you can send me a message um, I've helped several people with this, and I don't mind helping helping people out. I do work midnights, so at times I don't always answer during the daytime, but it does kind of help with people in other areas of the world. All right, uh, I'm just going to crochet here. Keep going. I'm almost to the cream color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the cream color on my hook. That one's kind of muddy. So I'm going to go ahead and have the cream on my hook there. All right, I pulled that a little bit tight. Okay, and this is the moss stitch. There's another stitch called the seed stitch, and it's um, almost identical to the moss stitch, except for in the turns. But for this video, we're going to do the moss stitch in, in the turns. All right, fourth from hook. One, two, three, and four. I hope it's clear here. All right, I'm gonna single crochet, chain one. I'm gonna also go through this kind of quickly because I'm gonna assume that you have seen other videos and that you're just kind of struggling with exactly how to get it. So here we're gonna address the turns. 
because I think people are just kind of missing it in the turns. Once you get the turns down, then I think you're going to be okay. All right, so I've got four of the cream color. I'm going into the brown. All right, also another important factor is muddy legs. If you've got muddy legs, that's going to interfere and that's going to mess you up. All right, I've got three brown. This brown, the skein that I have is, um, let's see, maybe I need to put my flash on and maybe not because it's not on. This brown does have some transition going into it. I hope you can see that. All right, going into this darker green. There's one stitch of really dark green before it actually goes into the teal. And I'm gonna get three teal stitches because I've already done this. Whenever you're first doing it, you need to count your stitches, see how many you have and keep that count consistent all the way through. I'm gonna move this up into the light just a little bit better. Okay. All right, so that's, now we're going into the burgundy and there's a darker purple stitch going into the burgundy. I'm gonna count that as part of the burgundy I'm going to have a total of five, only because I've done this like five times now, and I already know how many stitches I have. All right, you want the next color on your hook. So in here I am, and I'm starting back again with the cream color. So I've gone through my colors. All right, so I started out with, with the cream color, and I've crocheted all the way through, and now I'm back to the cream color again. Whenever you get to your color before you turn what you need to do is you need to pull out one stitch and this stitch is going to be part of your turn of your turning chain and this is the long tail side your turning chain is part of your stitches on your long tail side all right I have a hard time with that because I'm on a chain like two and then I turn it but I'm still got all this burgundy but I don't want it to be burgundy I want it to be the cream color. So I've already taken out the stitch that's gonna be part of the turning chain. But what I'm gonna do is take out one more because I need to eat up some of this yarn. So I'm gonna make this into a modified puff stitch. I go in, I pull it up. This is not a half double crochet. Yarn over, go back into the same hole, pull up, and then I'm gonna, I've got four loops on my hook and I'm gonna pull this yarn through all four. All right, and that helps to eat up some stitches. So I count that as two stitches, that's one, two. And then I chain two, and now I've got my cream color. So here I've got five burgundy on this first row. One, two, three, four, five. I count that as two stitches. I'm gonna turn it here. And now I'm going to begin with my cream color. One, I'm going to have four, two, three, and four. And I only want four, but I still have the cream on my hook and I need to have the brown on my hook. So I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to loosen them up a bit and try to eat up some of that yarn. Tails in the way. All right, so I need to have four. One, two, three. Four, and I need the brown on my hook. Very good. Okay, so now I have three brown that I need to make because I've already got my stitch count. I already know I have three brown. I have four cream. I've got th three teal, but there's also an extra green in there. 
so it's really four of them but that dark green color all right so there's the three brown and then here I'm going into the teal and I've got this dark green color going into the teal and then I've got three teal so you can say four teal if you want to and you can stretch that green out because sometimes I don't have enough teal to make three uh, like that so I'm gonna have to tighten these up a bit to get them to to make three full teal ones all right, so darker green transition into the teal. One, two, I've got them a bit tighter. Three. And now we're into the purple. I like to check both sides to make sure that my legs are not muddy. You don't want muddy legs. That can mess up your stitch count whenever you're going back across. And then I've got five burgundy. One, that one's two three, four, and on this non-tail side, all of my legs have to land. That was four, and now this one here is gonna be five. Okay, so this non-tail side, I had to have five burgundy. This dark purple one counts. One, two, three, four. I had to turn, chain up, and make five. On this, the long tail side, that chain up actually counts as one of your legs, as one of your stitches. On this side here, all of your legs have to land, but on this side with the long tail side, they don't. And as soon as you turn, you wanna check, you wanna check your work. So I've got four white stitches now that need to land, and I wanna see where they're gonna land at. My first stitch is going to start right here. So I'm up one and over one, so that's perfect. One, two, three. It's going to end right here at four, and that's exactly where I want it to end. All right, so I got one, two, three, and four. And it goes into the brown. All right. And now the brown, I'm going to have three stitches. My first brown is here, which is where I need it to be. One, two, three. It's going to be up one and over one, and that's perfect. It's right where I want it to be. One, two, and three. As you can see, this is, this is your third row. By your third row, you're going to see your pattern. If you're not seeing it in your third row, then you've messed up somewhere. You've messed up on your starting chain. You've messed up um, probably on your starting turn. The first turn and the second turn are very crucial to getting it to come out correctly. Knowing where your stitches have to land. All right, so then we have the dark green stitch that goes into the teal. So there's three teal. One, two... And I need to make it tighter because I'm going into the into the purple that goes into the burgundy. So I'm going to tighten her up. If need be, I can switch hooks. That's why I have other hooks laying here. One, two. I like to keep with the same hook. It just makes it quicker, makes it easier. But if I have to, I can always switch. That one's kind of muddy with the dark green but it goes into the teal and you can kind of count those all as one one two three four green one if you if you'd like to all right and then we've got this darker purple that leads into the burgundy makes five burgundy that's one two but here we have the long tail side so i'm going to have three and then stitch number four is actually going to be the chain stitch. But I'm going to make it a modified puff stitch because that's easier for me. So I've got one, two, modified puff stitch. I've got four loops on my hook. I'm going to pull through all four of those. All right, so it was one, two, three, and four. Turn. And this one is number five. Okay, and now I wanna see where I am. All right, 
So I've got the cream stitches is going to start here, which is good because it's up one and it's over one. So I'm not going to stack one, two, three, and I'm going to end it right here. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so we are up one and over one. Also, I've made note of this in my other videos and I meant to do it here at the beginning. Rows one and two are mirror images of each other. Rows three and four are mirror images. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out so I can explain that a little bit more here. So, row one, whenever I first started, had the one, two, three, four cream colored stitches. Whenever I began row two, it had the one, two, three, four cream color stitches. It had this burgundy in the turning, and this one had the burgundy in the turning chain. So when I first started out, remember, the very, very first row I did, I had the cream color on my hook, and that's where I started. And this here, I was fourth from the hook. So it's kind of part of my turning chain. This here is part of my turning chain. So it's, a it's an exact mirror image of each other. And once again, on the next row, I have one, two, three, maybe I'm going backwards. Nope, I'm good. That's my first row. So I've got on my second row, third row, I've got one, two, three, four of the stitches because, not one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I'm backwards. I've got one, two, three, four, and five. The fifth one kind of goes up to here. Whenever I'm coming across here, I've got one, two, three, four, and five. This fifth one, it starts this very next row, begins with burgundy, just as the row before it began with the burgundy stitch. One burgundy stitch and one, two, three, four, of the cream color. So I just started with a burgundy stitch and I'm gonna go with one, two, three, four of the cream color. Clear as mud, right? Yeah, that was probably a little bit confusing. All right, but they are an exact mirror image of each other. As long as you got your first rows correct, you really don't have to worry about that anymore. Because once you see that there, and they're gonna start, the stitches are gonna start landing in the correct places. I've got three brown. One, two, and three. All right, and then the dark green that leads into the burgundy green. And there's a little bit of dark green that's going into that burgundy as well. One, let's see, was that three? Yes, it was. And sometimes it's easier to count like that transition color as part of your color because as you can see here, it's already going in to the burgundy. If I tighten this up, that teal is gonna be really super tight, but we can make it work. All right, cause I'd have to loosen that up. I'm gonna loosen up the brown. I'll show you what I mean here. All right, three brown stitches. One, two, and it's totally up to you how you want to count it, how you want to include that transition. And your skein may not even have that transition like that. It just depends on your dye lot. All right, so now I'm onto the teal and I wanna get three stitches out of this teal. One, two, I'm making them kind of tight so I can do it here, pull it off without any muddy legs, and it worked, yay. Okay, and now it's going into the purple. I'm gonna have five of these, counting that purple stitch. One, two, and here at this corner, three, 
chain up to and this is the no tail side and this one here all my legs have to land so that was one two three four and five and then here I stop and I check I always stop and check on my corners to make sure that the very next row is going to land where it needs to be so I've got one, two, my very first cream color stitch needs to be here and that's where it's going to be. One, two, three, and four. So right now we are going perfect. One, two, three, four, and four. And I've got brown on my hook and I'm going to have three brown. One, two, and three. And then we're going into, there's a dark green. Transition into the three teal. One, two. I sure hope you're able to see this, okay? I have tried video in this now three times. I'm really hoping that this one is successful. Here we have the long tail side. And on the long tail side, one of your stitches is going to be eight up in the chain. So I've got to have five of the burgundy stitches. One, two, loop it over, do the modified. Go ahead and count that as three, four, and five. Still making it loose here. Okay. So only four of your legs landed because one of your legs is eight up in the chain stitch. So actually only four legs land on your long tail chain here. And then you stop and you look just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. All right. And then I've got my first cream color stitch needs to land here. And you can tell also that that's exactly the way that it happened on the previous row. One, two, and then right here is where this cream color stitch is gonna land. Yeah, and some of these have got like this burgundy that comes over to the top. Um, if you don't want that showing, then you can loosen up your stitches or you can tighten up your stitches and give it an extra stitch. The burgundy could be six stitches if you want however many that you're coming out, however many that yours is, is turning out to be. Um, because this, this top one that comes over here, whenever it's the same color that you're going into, the same color as your legs, then whenever it comes back over across the top, it doesn't show. But whenever it's mixed like that, it does have that in the pattern. You will see it kind of sticking out like that. So you can modify it, you can change your stitches to where that doesn't show. Um, in a lot of my work, that does unfortunately show. Some people it bothers them, some people it don't. Sometimes I just let it go. All right, and then the three teal. I'm gonna do one more turn over here and hopefully you guys understand the turns. Okay, so I'm back to the burgundy and I have to have five. But this is the no tail side, so all my legs are gonna land. All my stitches have to be there. One, two, I'm gonna chain. That does not count as number three. That's only one, two, that's number three, that's number four, and that one is number five. All my legs have to land on the non-tail side. And see where I am now? My cream color stitch is going to be in the correct position right there where it needs to be one two whenever you're crossing over in the middle sometimes that could be difficult too like those thick sides like this here whenever you got five stitches that's in your corners sometimes you can get um you can get misplaced um if you if you miscount you know all your legs have to land on this side this side they don't you got to eat up a stitch over here and that can that can throw a lot of people off too whenever it's the thicker color like that also in the middle whenever you're looking at the middle section and it, the colors are crossing over 
what you want to look at is like it's really hard to distinguish okay where am I supposed to be at with this brown because man that's a big old glob of brown and I can't tell where my stitches are supposed to land so look at the colors to the sides of it and make sure that those colors are the ones that's landing correctly if those are landing correctly then that blob that's in the middle that's going to land correctly too all right I've got three brown two and three and then I go into the dark green that transitions into the teal. One, two, three teal. That's perfect, that's beautiful. And now here we are. And I've gotta have, I've got five stitches of the burgundy, but only four of those stitches are gonna land because this is the long tail chain side. I do a modified puff stitch because it helps to eat up that extra yarn. Sometimes you won't have all that extra yarn if it's a tight color. Like whenever the teal winds up being over here on this side, I may not be able to do that modified puff stitch with this teal color uh, because I do have to make them kind of tight. So sometimes I won't do it on there. All right, so that was one, two, three, four, and five and I stop and I look every time I always stop and look and make sure that they're gonna land correctly and my first off-white stitch cream color stitch is gonna go there one two three four all right guys I hope this helps um, I hope this uh, helps to clarify some of the issues that some people do have with plan pulling and it just not coming out right this um, could very well be the culprit is those turning chains alrighty so and that was plan pulling with antique and I hope you I hope it helps you guys all right um, hit the like button follow me on some other videos and stuff I plan on posting more in the future um, I do have almost every color of red heart super saver almost every color I live in a small town so whatever my Walmart has um, but this Walmart actually has a nice selection for the size of town that it is and um, you can even uh, message me on Facebook as well. And here's, this is, all right, so this side here has got several of the modified puff stitches. It goes up just a little bit on this corner here, but whenever you put a border on it, you really can't tell. Some people do prefer to do the seed stitch on those corners instead because it doesn't go as it doesn't make it as thicker on the edging and stuff so it's totally up to you but whenever you're just now starting out to do plan pulling and you're just trying to learn it and stuff and you're having issues with it um, I suggest doing it this way but um, that's all for today thank you so much for following and I hope you have a great day and God bless